Hi, I'm Rob, and I like making stuff for the CNC. Specifically for this episode, drum stuff on the CNC. I'm often asked by people, what's the favorite drum I've built? And to give that answer, I go back to a quote that Enzo Ferrari made when they asked him what's his favorite Ferrari he built. And his answer always was, I haven't made it yet. And that's kind of the way it goes. The next drum, the one you're thinking about in your mind, is your favorite one. So they ask, okay, exclude the one you haven't built yet, what's your favorite drum then? And my answer is almost always the one I'm working on right now. So if you pin me down to my favorite drums, I think back to ones like this very first one I did that was good enough to give to somebody, my son-in-law in this case, or the first time I accomplished something special, like filling in a carving with epoxy, which came out wonderful in this example, and which has eluded me in future projects when I tried to fill with epoxy. Like this one, which came out very nice, but in the end it cracked, so it's a failure actually. Or the very first time I had a 3D carve on a drum that came out wonderful, like this one. I've done many 3D carves now, and similar designs, no two are ever the same, but I'm using a very similar technique that I developed for that very first 3D drum. I would also list this as one of my favorite drums because, well, it's a great drum and it raised a lot of money in a charity auction. And there's other designs that were an idea in my brain that I was able to implement into a real drum that were hard to do, so then I doubled down and made it harder yet. Which brings me to my favorite drum, the drum I'm currently working on, of course. This is another puzzle drum. It was always the plan to make a second puzzle drum after that first one. This one has many varieties of more exotic hardwoods, like Paduke, Purple Heart, Walnut, Roasted Oak, Roasted Maple, and there might even be some cherry in there too. Now it's time to drill the holes in the shell for the hardware. That is a very scary thing, drilling holes into a drum that you already have invested 60 hours into. One slip up or mistake, and it's all for naught, and you wasted all that effort. Before taking the drum out to the CNC and drilling the lug holes and hardware holes into it, first have to design the tool paths and map everything out in CAD. So here's what that is process is. I'm going to create a new file. It is a rotary file. It is an 8 inch wide drum and it is 13.875 or 13 and 7 eighths inches. And I'll leave the datum on the the center, and OK. I'm going to draw a quick line from the top to the bottom. We're going to have 10 lug holes on this, or 10 lugs. There'll be, of course, this system has 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4 times 10, so 40 holes technically. But it's kind of hard to start in the middle and know exactly where to have 10 go through. So actually, the top to bottom, I'm going to do 11 holes where the very top one and the very bottom one are the same hole. They overlap each other. So even though I'm going to say 11 here, I'm actually doing 10. So a number of copies of a quarter inch hole is going to be 11. Copy. And there we go. I might use that line later. I'm going to move it to the side with the arrow. I know that from my measurements, the hole on the, from this side is 1.775. I had my caliper out and did that. There's several ways of doing that. I do it kind of a lazy way. I'm going to draw a box and make it 1.75775 wide. Apply. Close that. And I'm going to drag that to the very edge. There's fancier ways of doing that when you tell it where to align things and whatnot. This is, like I say, it's kind of a cheater's way, but... Gosh darn, it works so good for me. I'm not going to quit doing what I do. Plus, I'm really used to it. Highlight all those and drag it right here. So now we have the left side. And the lugs, it's one inch exactly between the two holes. So I'm going to come over here until it says one inch. There we go. Close. I don't want to copy that box. 
Control, Control V. So that's the left side, uh, yeah, that's the left side of the drum. Now I'm gonna come down here and highlight the whole darn thing, remove that, go to Copy Objects, and copy horizontally. Now we have them all over on this side. So that's our 40 holes, even though 44 technically, but that's our 40 holes done. Easy enough. Now, we will have the holes for the butt plate and the vent hole, and we'll also have holes for the snare drum throw. So if I go one above the middle, I'll go one above the bottom. Those two are actually exactly opposite each other. So I need to find the center point here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw a line between the center of that one and the center of that one. And now I just move the cursor and suddenly it says that's your center point. So that's my center point that I want. On the butt plate, I have two circles exactly one inch apart. So let's draw the two circles, a 0.25. I'm going to put one right here. I'm going to do another one where the Y is one inch apart. One, and apply. Whoops. I should have clicked somewhere else. So that one's again at zero, zero, and that one's zero, one. So, oops, highlight both, and I'm just going to drag it right here. So those are centered between these right here. And those, I want to be 2.15 inches in. So I'm going to draw another square from the edge. 2.15, and I'm just going to come here and close that and drag this to the edge. It's going to be a lot wider. That way it'll be easy to match up. Oops, actually I went too far. Keep using arrows, and the last little bit, I will drag it right there. So now I have two holes directly centered between those two edges, 2.15 inches in. Still need this one, because I'm going to have the vent hole right through here somewhere. The vent hole is going to be 3.75 inches in, so I'm just going to hit that one and go 3.7. Actually, I'm going to hit right here first, and 3.75. So when it expands, by having this one checked, it's going to expand out this way instead of from the center point where it go wrong, or go both edges. So it apply, so it's still 3.75 here. That's the point right there where it intersects that I want to have our event hole. And I make... And ta-da! Okay, so those are done now. And do a similar thing down here, except for the throw, the holes are going to go vertical or horizontal instead of vertical like this. And they're seven eighths of an inch across. And they are going to be from the far edge 3.4751. The caliper comes out real exact, and I like the number. So let's find our center point between these two sets of holes again. I'm just going to draw a line. Point to point. And I'm going to find that center point where it changes to the bullseye. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to draw my, set my holes on the center line, the zero line up here. So I'm just do one right there at zero, zero. And that's a half inch hole. Let's change that to point two five. And the other one is going to be at Y. I'm sorry. 125 minus, if my math is right, 3.125, apply. <laughs> and again, I didn't make a copy first, so I could just click right here. Those two should be 0.875, so let's get our magic measuring tool here. Center here to center here, and it says 0.875, so we're good. But these are going to be rotated 90 degrees. Like that, and I'm just going to hold the arrow key down. Get it kind of close. Zoom in. Hit that center point. Drag it right there. 
is all of the holes I was drilling in this drum. It better be right. That drum has about 60 hours of work time in it right now, which is a ridiculous amount of time for a drum. I make drums because I like making drums, not because it's a money-making venture. If I was trying to make money, I would probably try to pay myself more than about half of minimum wage after all my expenses. So my goal is to break even, be able to buy some tools and some more wood for another drum. So I can accomplish that. I treat this as a hobby, like some people treat golf as a hobby. The cool thing is, when you golf, you don't get paid even half of minimum wage. So I'm happy. My wife's happy. I'm not taking money out of our savings for my crazy hobby. So everyone's happy. So let's make some tool paths now. So we're going to use a drilling tool path. And I'm going to highlight all just of the lug holes to start with. I want a tool path just for that. I'm going to set it for 0.8 to go through the drum. The drum isn't quite that thick. So this is an overkill. And I'm gonna change that to 0.25 end mill. Select. And I really wanna take, it's gonna do a pecking, they call it, where it pecks up and down, pulls it out, retracts, goes back down. I want it to be very shallow. Yeah, 0 0.0625. Very, a little bit comes out each time, then it pulls it out, extracts out. Another important thing, I'll probably mention again later, because I will forget what I've said now, I want to use an upcut end mill. Some people really like down cuts right now. They're very cool. Cody makes an awesome one. Or a compression bit, which is kind of a combination. The problem with those is they don't pull the sawdust out. It's part of how it leaves a clean cut. It's not pulling that sawdust out. You start pushing a bit into a hole and not extracting that dust out. You get friction, smoke. You'll burn up your bit and ruin your bit. And if you leave it even very, I'd bet 30 seconds to a minute, you'll have a fire. That's how, how important it is to use an upcut. So that's my little safety trip for, tip for today. That part is done. And we're going to save that as drill lugs. I'll put 0.25 end mill so I know what's going on here. Calculate. The other parts, the hardware, the other hardware, I'm going to drill those two. Even though this one's a half inch hole, I'm gonna first drill it as a quarter inch. The, the bit I use for half inch surfacing, I guess I usually for, it does leave us, the center part does not cut out the center. So again, I would be cutting the edges and it would not be good. So I'm gonna first cut the eighth inch or a quarter inch hole, then a half inch hole after that. It'll make more sense in the video probably. In, oops, drilling. Should save all our settings that I had before. Drill hardware. Calculate. Then there'll be one more bit, or tool path. I'll do a tool path for that one. Same basic stuff, a drill, but I'm going to change it to a half inch drill bit. And again, it doesn't really matter. When you do a drilling tool path, there is no difference as far as vectric is concerned, whether it's an eighth inch or a half inch or one inch. It treats them all exactly the same. Drill vent hole. Five end mill. So the tool paths are done, but I'm going to do one more thing actually. I'm going to copy this one, duplicate. I know when I get out there, I'm going to test the heck out of this. Because I, like I mentioned before, I've got. 80 hours into that, or I'm sorry, 60 hours in that drum right now. And <laughs> the pucker factor is going to be insane while I'm drilling these holes. I do not want to mess up after I've got the drum basically done. So I'm going to tell this just to go like 10 thousandths. I'll raise the bit up a little bit. I want to actually cut, just cut air just while I'm testing, but I'm going to test it and then put that bit right above my marks where I've measured things in. We'll go from there. And I think I'll do the same thing for hardware. So right click, duplicate. And zero one. Oops. Test. Okay. 
So side notes here. Now let's go ahead and run the tool paths, first of all. We don't really, you now those duplicate over the top of each other. We'll just run all of them. Some of those are a bit redundant. Actually, I like it when it shows it all flat. So here's the, I mentioned before, these two sets of holes are the same holes. That's It shows half of one side and half the other. In fact, I might remove one. When I run this in the drum, I'll probably delete one set of holes. Though so no big deal either way. But you can see there's the holes. If I put my mouse over, you can see down here the depth is 0.8. The drum's about 0.8. Six its thickest spot, so actually it's going to cut through and it'll waste a few seconds of cutting air. That's fine with me. Better go a little too deep and not worry about it. Looks correct there. I'll switch it back to the rotary and we can spin it around. So you can see that little seam there in the background. That actually is where when we had it laid out flat, this is where the one side ends and the other side ends here. That joins together, but again, that's technically two holes on top of each other. We can't tell, and it's perfect, so we're good. So when we talk about doing rotary designing, this feels exactly like a flatbed or XYZ machine designing. I'm just wrapping around that cylinder. Other jobs you do on rotary when we're talking about a 3D model that's was a 3D model not wrapping around a cylinder, that's much different. I don't do that very often. So working with these and working with a traditional XYZ machine, almost identical. Just rendering and, of course, you have to change here. I have to change which machine when I create my tool paths. You tell it that I'm using the, that's my old flat, it's not old, but it is old. That's my flatbed and here's my rotary. So I go between those two. It changes my post processor to the rotary versus my XYZ, whatever. It doesn't say anything. It's just traditional machine. So I have to make sure I change the machine when I start doing this and we go from there. I hope this makes sense to everyone. I've wasted a bunch of time talking about it and we'll have it at the machine and we'll see how this comes out and hopefully it will work out and I will not cry because if I ruin this drum at this point, I will be quite upset and... Yeah, you'll see an outrage, <laughs> outrage on my face. So let's pray it goes good. Let's head out the machine now. I mentioned before when I made the tool paths how I want to run a simulation without cutting into the drum. This, the machine thinks, is cutting 10 thousandths into the drum, though I raised the Z bit, so the height. So it's not cutting anything but air. I've got a few spots I marked in the drum where I know exactly where the, the lugs to sit, and you'll see me stop. All right, that one right there has got some markings on it. I'm making sure it matches up. And after running this many, many times, I am satisfied. You see my head peek in there a little bit to verify it's good. So I'm satisfied at that point, and it's time to start actually cutting the drum. I'll run this showing the tool path as it cuts the holes at regular speed for one of the holes, but Running this at regular speed for 40 holes would take a long time, and honestly, it's kind of boring. It's just packing up and down, going a little deeper each pass, and then goes to the next hole. For the people who saw my last video, you noticed how I changed how the timing pulley works on the left there with that black belt that wraps around it. I changed how it's held in place, and I put in new uh, clamshells that hold the drum in place. I have to say this worked out great. The drum feels much more stable cutting into it. I'm able to push things a little bit harder with no chatter, more stability. So I am very happy at this point. And now it's finishing up for the tool paths for the hardware that's not the lugs. Here's a quick shot of the drum after the holes have been drilled. But at this point, I have not done a few more coats of finish and then sanded, wet sanded, and polished it up nice. So. It will get better as we look later down the road. And here's a quick video of me adding some of the nuts and bolts for the tube lugs. As I said, these are one inch tube lugs and there's two per row lug, however you want to say that. So there's 20 total, so 40 nuts and bolts to add. So it takes a while to do this, but still not that time consuming. And it is really satisfying to see it come together. Really enjoyable, I like this part.
Here is a beauty shot for the drum. It's basically finished. All you do now is add the heads. I'll do a shot of that later, but I want to show it off spinning a few times so you can see the inside and outside. It really polished up nice. Really nice. This is going to be a great drum for somebody. And when I say it's going to be a nice drum for somebody, I mean to say this one's already sold. And unless somebody throws a bag of cash at me, there will be no more. This took a lot of effort to make one drum, and I enjoyed it, but doing more than one gets kind of repetitious, so I like doing new things always, so this will be the last one of the puzzle series, unless there are some kind of extenuating circumstances. And then here's a final shot of the drum with the head on it, as it gets ready to go off to its forever home. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Thanks, and have a great day, everyone.